Bring a selfie already? Yeah. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind just leaning back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> so, Michael, I mean, the second series begins with an almighty bang. That's important, isn't it, to, to up the stakes in, the, in, this, in this second series? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a statement of intent, if, if, if nothing else. I mean, it, it, it was always intended that if season one worked very well, that we would get bigger and better. And uh, there's no doubt that we've done that. And, and so we start with a, with a huge battle uh, scene um, between the two brothers and um, very craftily set up. Uh, by me at the end of the first season, so we, we would have to go to a second uh, season. And um, but I do need to point out, I think that in a world of of, of visual effects, uh, we continue to do most of the things properly and in reality. So uh, a lot of the battle uh, is real battle. I mean, th these are a, a, a real uh, men and women fighting. And uh, someone pointed out to me that um, if you look at the film Saw, uh, it's all CGI. All the fights, uh, they don't fight at all in, in, in that movie. And we do so many of the stunts our, ourselves. And I think it shows. And we don't clone people and see, we don't have CGIs. Well, not yet, anyway. We don't have CGI armies. We have real people. And I think that kind of authenticity is, is, is really important to the show. Of course, of course. I mean, the relationship between the two brothers is so, is so central and important, isn't it? I mean, I don't think Ragnar would have gained his power without his big brother. He wouldn't have sailed without his big brother. Do you agree? It's, uh, yes, I do. And I think, I think uh, the, the relationship with the brothers is core to the show because uh, I always had in mind that this was a family saga. Uh, this was about a man who had a wife and two children, who loved his family, who had uh, problematic relationships with his brother and his boss. And that, in a sense, universalizes the story. It humanizes everything. But, but certainly the relationship between Ragnar and Rollo is interesting and ongoing. We, we know from episode, from season one, that Rollo... Uh, uh, at least in the past, had desired Ragnar's wife. Uh, we know that Rolla has a very good relationship with Bjorn, uh, Ragnar's son. And uh, we know that Ragnar always promised that he and his brother would always be equal. Uh, but that promise comes under huge strain and already has, in a sense, now that Ragnar is an earl. So how can they be, how can they be equal? And I mean, in the second series, we see Ragnar go raiding without Rolo. He says it's because he can't trust him. Yeah. But um, is there more to it than that? Perhaps Ragnar, because Rolo saves the day, perhaps Ragnar knows on some level it could be useful to have his brother at home. Or maybe it's the gods smiling on it, maybe, I don't know. Uh, well, that's an interesting question. And, 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 and some, some of the things I do leave to the gods, I think, when I'm, when I'm writing it. Um, my sense at the time uh, was that it was a partial uh, reconciliation but still an extraordinary one because I think in reality in Viking society it would have been it wasn't unheard of but very very unusual for brothers or family members to forgive a family member who betrayed uh, you know the family the village the community uh, because Viking society is built around family ties. So even Ragnar's partial forgiveness of his brother was, is an extraordinary thing, um, which has consequences in the long term. Of course. Yeah. And I mean, no one's ever done a drama from the point of view of the Vikings mm. before. I thought it was important to humanise them. H how is that done? Because they didn't keep record did they how do you keep historically accurate uh well people haven't made uh many films or, or tv shows about the vikings because they never thought i think that the, the vikings 
uh, could be the lead guys in a show. They were always the other. They were always brutish. They were uh, they were represented in 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 in, in culture. In most cultures, as the other, as the, the, the fierce strangers who break into your house and rape and pillage. And so how was it possible that you could actually run a show when they were the heroes, when they were the centre? Uh, and there are two things to say about that. One is that I became really fascinated by Viking culture, uh, the Viking gods, Viking society, and I found it more interesting and complex than most people had given it credit for. Uh, you know, the relationship to, to, to uh, women was much more uh, egalitarian than in other societies of the time. It was a much more democratic society. Ragnar himself was not just driven by the need to plunder or uh, uh, pillage. He was driven by curiosity. He uh, felt that, knew that he was related to the god Odin, who'd sacrificed an eye to look into the well of knowledge. So he was spurred on, um, motivated by uh, curiosity about other lands, other religions, other places. And, and I'm sure the Vikings were. You, if you look at what they actually achieved uh, from such a limited base to go, uh, you know, sailing the Mediterranean to discover North America hundreds of years before Columbus to colonize Iceland and Greenland and so on. I mean, they must have been a very curious race. But the other answer to the question is that if you look at the lead characters of nearly all the best contemporary and recent TV shows, none of the lead characters are good or not simply good. They are complex. They, uh, sometimes they're gangsters, sometimes they are murderers, sometimes, you know, they have very, very serious and deep flaws. And this makes them really interesting. So I have characters who do kill innocent monks. You know, they are very tough guys. They are very violent. They live in a violent culture, in a violent world. But they are extraordinary warriors. But they're also complex and interesting. And, uh, you know, their dark side is something that that interests uh, the public. And, um, I mean, will we soon be seeing them arrive in Ireland? Uh, well, in a sense, uh, they already are in Ireland because we shoot it in, in, in Wicklow and... and uh, and it's very important for me to stress, because I know it's only just going out now on Irish t TV, which is a shame that, um, that it hasn't been shown before because it was, it was made in Ireland. Um, there are some shots that we took in, in, in Norway, but essentially it was made around uh, the studio and in, in Wicklow, in, on the sea, um, in the in uh, in the woods in the lakes or, uh, uh, around there, with an Irish crew, uh, with Irish directors, uh, with thousands of Irish extras, uh, with Irish cooking and Irish hospitality, and uh, and and the heads of the department uh, on the show are Irish, a costume designer, a designer. I, I really want Irish people to know how important uh, they are, Ireland is, to this show. And I, I don't think that's been, speaking as an Englishman, I, I don't think that's been shouted enough. I don't think this show could have been made anywhere but Ireland. I don't think there's another crew in the world that could have pulled off this show. I mean, the production values are... Are extraordinary. I mean, it's like watching a lot of movies, and uh, and it's because this is a crew that's worked together since Braveheart. They're a kind of movie crew. They know how things are done, and um, you know, it's not. I mean, the cast is fantastic, and the cast comes from other places too. But just to reiterate and repeat and stress the importance of uh, the, the Irish connection. And, um, and and as far as getting the uh, the, the, the the boats to Ireland, yes, it, they, we will go to, we will definitely go to Ireland. I mean, you know, Dublin is an Irish uh, Dublin is a Viking city. As I grew up near York, in in uh, Yorkshire, and that's an Irish, that's that's another Viking city, and um, and we want to show very much that a lot of us, a lot of contemporary life is built 
upon the foundations of Viking culture and Viking legal systems. Okay. And um, I mean, we, we're talking about series two now, obviously, but I imagine people like yourselves and uh, Morgan O'Sullivan mm. already visualizing series three, four, five, right up to discovering America. I'm, I'm writing season three, and um, we're planning uh, what we need to build for season three. We know that we. You know, we may, we've started the first season, we had three boats. We had nine or ten the second season. And the next season, we need one way or another to have a hundred boats. Uh, so th those things don't happen overnight. And so, yes, everything is, is swinging into, uh, uh, into gear now. I mean, I know it's um, I know it's history, but it's it's condensed history, isn't it? So that you follow characters like like Ragnar through events that happen over hundreds of years. So will the character of Rag of Ragnar and Rolo remain as as constant, even though the events are are spread spread over years? Um, y yes, uh, it, of course. The Vikings writing the Vikings was different from writing the Tudors because the Tudors there's almost too much material everything's written down there are you know there's a, a, a huge contemporary uh, amount of material to, to to work from with Vikings it's different because it's the dark ages they didn't write anything down a lot of of what we know was written by say Arab traders by Christian monks by their enemies We've found out things and, and a lot more things recently that have you know come out of the earth. We dig things up uh, constantly. But from my point of view, I, I work on the same principle that everything I do is rooted in reality or what I've read in a history book or what I've found out was supposedly true. We know that Ragnar Lothbrok was a historical character. We know he had a lot of sons. We know what some of the sons did. We know he invaded England and so on. And so forth. So wherever I take the story, it's it may sometimes move away from what we know because we don't know that much. But it's still attached by a chain to historical fact and to reality. And so I'm not interested in fantasy. I'm not interested in making things up that I don't need to make up. Okay. I mean, what is it about yourself and Morgan O'Sullivan that, that work together so well? Is it similar interests or...? Uh, we complement each other, and in fact, we've we've recently gone uh, formed a company together because we we, we do work very well, and, and we're trying to uh, uh, to bring more and more uh, big scale production to Ireland. That's that's one of our intentions. Um, Morgan is someone who gets things done. His contacts in Ireland are second to to none. And, uh, and of course, wherever he goes in the world, if he wants to go into uh, one of the American studios or if he wants to meet the head of, uh, uh, you know, the Canadian network, they're always Irish. <laughs>